Hello GearFax friends, today we're looking at a Boss BR1180 multi-track recording CD burning home studio. Let's see what we got. Like so much of what I review here on GearFax, this was insanely good equipment at the time. The time being approximately 2004. Check out the price tag, three grand. It's still usable today though, it's got a whole guitar and vocals multi-effects system built in. It records 10 tracks at 44.1 kilohertz, that's perfectly acceptable. The only bit where it really falls down is that all data transfer is done on CD. That's right, despite the year of production, there is no USB on this machine. You do get MIDI in and out though, you can see an SP diff socket there, momentary pedal and expression pedal inputs. <laughs> At the other end, we've got very high quality TRS and XLR inputs designed for vocals and guitar separately. Various audios in and out here, and a headphone socket with its own trim pot. Hard drive is built in, I believe it's 20 gigabytes. But that's enough spec for now, let's have a listen to some of these effects. It's a multi-effect system that's endemic to many different BOSS desktop systems, with all the features you'd expect, such as amp modeling. That's a better tone. And we'll add a bit of delay to that. So it's pretty easy to get to the tone that you want. Here's a few more. Like all of BOSS's BR series, the 1180 CD has some drums. Though I have heard people describe them as cheesy. Some of the kits are pretty good though. Now let's try multi-tracking some stuff together. Whoops, as you can hear, there's already a song recorded on some of these tracks. Our drum track has been recorded though. And I guess that little snippet gives you an idea of what the vocal recording quality is like. Incidentally, I've just used a little loop from a Zoom G10N multi effects unit because I thought it sounded a bit better. Now I need a bass sound to go on top of that. Some of the effects serve as bass simulators so I can use my normal guitar. Mm, not bad, let's try another one. Yep, I think that more or less suits the vibe I'm going for. Let's record bass on track two. Tracking on the bass simulator isn't always perfect, but let's find a guitar sound now. Maybe a wah sound? No, too squealy. Yeah, a soft overdrive with a bit of delay. Story. 
Oh, there's some remains of that old song again. We can remove that by going into our utilities and erasing the bits that we don't need between two separate points. So now when we hit playback we should only get what we intended to get. Although I will say that this part of the process is very error prone and can be a little bit frustrating. Mastering, however, is quite fun. There are quite a few mastering profiles that you can choose from. So just scroll through until you find one that feels good. Something else I should mention is that you can still route individual tracks into these extra effects. And in the mastering process, this can really pick up that extra bit of class that you might have been looking for. The mastering effect profile I think works for this particular tune is low boost. And you can go ahead and edit that mastering effects process the same way you do for guitar and vocal effects. So is the BR-1180 still a usable recording system today? Well, I think yes, of course it is. It's got great sound quality and it's got all the features that you need. And of course, if you're one of those people who prefers to stay away from computers, you like the reliability and the instantaneousness of a dedicated recording system, well, the 1180 is a great way to go. A lot of people have the reasonable opinion that avoiding computers is a Luddite mentality. And I think we can all agree that as a method of data transfer, this is terrible. Remember, no matter how easy it is, it might be to forget that great songs come from great musicianship and great songwriting.